Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to my review of the ASUS Zephyrus G16. This is probably one of the best gaming laptops I've seen this year. So let's talk about it. Yes, I said this is probably the best gaming laptop of this year. This is the Asus Zephyrus G16. It is a wonderful laptop and you guys are wonderful. So I wanna just first of all, thank you for all the warm wishes and get wells and all that fun stuff. I'm getting better, my foot's getting better. So thank you very much guys. But I wanna spend time on this laptop because I've been using it to game while, you know, I've been kind of sitting around. This thing is absolutely stunning. Now, Asus has built something that isn't heavy, but also very comfortable to carry around. You've got that new trade back slash on the back of this device, uh, but the chassis is pretty nice and slick overall. The overall look is just pretty good. Whatever angle you're looking at, this laptop looks really stunning. And that starts off with the display, 16 inch display. It's an OLED display, 2560 by 1600, 500 nits, it is super sharp. So whether you're looking at any different angle, the display looks great. You're looking at those, that Gojo wallpaper, you want Gojo to call back. You're going, Gojo, where are you? Gojo, Gojo, Gojo. Please bring back Gojo. Anyway, it looks stunning. What are you gaming? It looks absolutely great with every game you play. The colors are pretty nice on this thing. I love the fact that they went with that. Now you also have a nice big chassis with a full keyboard, there, is, there are no numb keys, which some people might be disappointed because it's a 16 inch laptop, but that leaves rooms for some very big top firing speakers. And honestly, when you hear them while we game, these speakers are pretty awesome. And I like that. You've got, of course, your macro keys, a power button. There is no fingerprint sensor, but there is from Windows Hello with the cameras, which are pretty good. And then you've got a nice big trackpad. I do like the trackpad, though it's a bit clicky when you press it. You see what I mean? Still good though. Now in terms of ports though, you've got your DCI in on the left-hand side, HDMI port. You've got a Thunderbolt port, which is nice, Thunderbolt 4. You've got a USB type A, 10 gigabits, headphone jack. And then on the right-hand side, another USB type C, USB A, and a full-size SD card slot. So everything you need on here. Now you can open this laptop up in terms of seeing the internals, but you do know that the RAM is soldered on, so that's something to take note. But you can get up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, you can get up to two terabytes of storage. A plus, that storage is expandable if you want to. But the main thing is the CPU and GPU combination on here. For the GPU, you can start from RTX 4070 to 4090. I've got a 4090 in here. And this is running the brand new Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. I repeat, the Core Ultra 9 185H. This is the first time I'm using this chipset. This is a 16-core CPU with six performance cores, eight efficiency cores, and two low power efficiency cores. So you've got a lot packed into it. Plus it does have the Intel Arc chipset as well, uh, which can be used in different scenarios. This thing is awesome in terms of what it brings to the table. So let's just take a look at the benchmarks here, right? We have our benchmarks, of course, starting with Cinebench uh, 2024, and you can see the GPU benchmarks doing really well there. But let's go over to, of course, 3D Mark, where you can look at our Time Spy scores, and, and you can see this thing blows away at the Time Spy, Spy scores. Absolutely stunning stuff. And then you look at each game it goes through, it is pretty solid. Doesn't matter whether it's Battlefield, Apex, um, GTA 5, Red Dead Redemption, or whatever you're doing at 1080p, it's good. And then moving over to Port Royal scores, again, some really stunning scores there. And then finally, looking at Fire Strike Ultra. The scores there are impressive, so it does well with synthetic benchmarks, which are great. But what about the gaming performance? This is where I want you guys to take a look at things. So I want you guys to look at the gameplay, look at the settings, look at the performance, and listen to the audio. So let's go ahead and take a look.
Okay, that was impressive. I mean, some solid performance all around for every single game. I maxed almost every game out. You can see it there all the way through, but you're going, okay, Thunder E, what about Hell Driver 2? I did see it in your game list somewhere there. Yes, yes, yes. I did try to play the game. I was waiting on the service for like 20 minutes and I got in. So take a look. Yeah, impressive performance on Hell Driver 2. Awesome to see that. It was great. But one thing I really liked about this laptop was the performance when it wasn't plugged in. Again, that is something that you usually don't see with gaming laptops on the PC side is performance with the laptops not plugged in. So I decided to go ahead and try it out with game with all the games and I kept everything at the same max settings. Now the frame rates did drop for all the games. So starting with Street Fighter, that it didn't drop actually. Street Fighter 16 at 60 frames per second um, at max settings. Same thing with uh, Tekken. Tekken varied between 55 to 60 frames per second at max settings. Moving over to Forza Motorsports, that went at roughly, uh, I would say between 50 to 70 frames per second. That was a fluctuating point. And then we moved over to um, Doom Eternal, that ran at 120 frames per second at max settings. And then finally Hell Divers 2, that came in at roughly around 36 to 47 frames per second. Again, it's an online game, so I definitely understand that. But the performance without it being plugged in, nuts, absolutely nuts. This is great to see. I am impressed with what Intel has done here with Asus, with Nvidia. This is a package that I think a lot of gamers will love because it brings a lot of performance. Now, speaking of temps, you're thinking, is it really hot? Is it cold? Well, I got a maximum of 105 degrees for the five hours of gameplay that I had, which was impressive, for, especially for a laptop that's putting this kind of uh, performances. And that can be attributed to a bunch of things, liquid metal cooling, um, on the uh, CPU, which is great to see. You also have a vapor chamber built in there, as well as also the new tri-fan system technology, making it cooler all the way through. And I absolutely love the fact that the system ran cool while gaming heavily, and the fans were not loud at all. Seriously, just listen to them yourself. So again, impressive stuff all the way. Do I call this the best gaming laptop? I am tempted to say yes, because right now this really handles a lot of things well. Even the battery life performance while using it on its own, uh, this did come under 10 hours, but it did a solid around like eight or nine hours or so. So I did like the performance here. I think this is good. Honestly, as a gamer, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm liking new laptops like this. You can see the chassis size, you can see how thick or thin you want to call it and also the weight is also comparably nice so i'm impressed i'm happy and i think this is something that a lot of gamers will be impressed with so if you have any questions or any comments about the asus uh, zephyrs g16 let me know otherwise don't forget to like share subscribe and 
always enjoy entertainment.